Hello guys and guyettes. Um, today I'm going to be making an updated tutorial on my how to make a 3D logo um, video that I did a while ago. Um, there have been various problems that people have had and since Blender has updated as a program I thought it would be a really great idea to make um, an updated tutorial to help you guys um, make your logos um, because some of the techniques that I used in the old one may not work anymore and um, I just thought I could clarify on a few things that I didn't. So if you're unclear about anything I did in this episode, make sure you watch my old tutorial first so you kind of pick up on those little things that you might be missing out on. With that said, let's go ahead and um, start with the tutorial. Now the first problem that people had is that the camera was in the wrong place for them when they started and there was this cube here. Um, now it had passed over my mind that I had a custom um, startup file. I had actually specified like a, a file that I had altered and um, changed the camera position, gotten rid of this cube, and I had set that as the default load up. Um, so, but that wasn't your guys's load up. So it got a little bit confusing right off the bat for some people and they got a little bit discouraged. Um, it's really simple to fix this. All you have to do is select your cube and then hit delete and then enter and then select your uh, camera hit one or you know what um, all the one on the numpad and all that on the numpad and changing your location that can all be done from view and then going to these right here you see how um, right next to them it says like numpad one numpad two um, if you don't have a number pad on your keyboard like the little um, section off to the right of your keyboard with the numbers on it. If you do not have that, you can do the same thing here. Um, but for the sake of the, this tutorial, I'm going to be using this menu so it's less confusing for those of you who don't have a number pad. So I'm going to click front here. I'm going to hold down control. I'm going to hold down alt and I'm going to press zero on my numpad. And uh, what that's going to do is um, relocate your camera to the um, to the front position. So now, if we go back to that old old um, position that we were in, you notice how it's like off to the side instead of hovering like right here. So it's in position. Now it's gonna face the text right on. So next thing we have to do is add the text. I go to create. Um, there is no add menu anymore. So it, that was another confusing thing since Blender updated. Go to create and then click text. Now all I have to do is drag this over. Um, a third place where it got a little bit confusing was the rotating. I press R on my keyboard, I press X on my keyboard, I press 9 on my keyboard, and I press 0 on my keyboard. Um, people were saying that there's no 90 uh, key on your keyboard. Um, just go ahead and left or right click now. No, that undid it. R, X, 9, 0. Now, left click. There we go. That'll save your changes. Um, people were complaining that there was no 90 button on their keyboard. I was just pressing 9 and then 0. Um, I didn't imagine that could be confusing, but apparently it was to some people, so I'm sorry. Um, another one, uh, tab, and then you put in your name. Um, tab with the text selected, of course. And then to get out of here, this was another confusing part, you press tab. So um, that's how you get out. People were stuck in the text edit mode. Um, and then you just kind of use these little arrows to reposition it right in the center of this little rectangle here, which is going to be your camera zone. And then now we're ready to go ahead and press the F tab in your properties window. The properties window is the one with the little scrolls thingies. I don't, it looks like that. Go to the F for font or text or something like that. Scroll down to you see the font tab right here. And then under regular, click the little file cabinet thing. Go to your wherever you have your font saved. Mine is under my desktop right here. Uh, I'm going to double click that. And that will apply your font to your text. Uh, you can now proceed to um, select your text by uh, right clicking on it and then scaling it up to fill your camera area and then left click to save the scale and then position it yet again in the center of your camera um, the 
The different font is optional, but of course, if you want to make it look professional, you're going to have to download a font from like defont.com or you, you can just Google fonts and there's a load of websites where you can get these little, um, what are they called? They're like TFF files. Oh no, OTF, OTF files. Um, so yeah, as long as you have that, you don't need to double click and install it. That's just an optional step if you want to use it in different programs, but Blender is able to just have you select that little tiny little file right there and then it'll apply the font. All right, so we can proceed to change the color, um, go to intensity, jack that up to a one, and then diffuse, change that to whatever the color you want your text to be. I'm going to have mine be kind of a, bring that brightness up on the right here. I'm going to have that be a nice royal blue. I'm going to go back to the font tab, the F, or the text tab. I'm going to scroll up to where you see geometry right here. And I'm going to play with the extrude just a little bit. And I'm going to extrude it out. You see how it um, kind of gives it depth. And then the bevel depth, that'll give it a nice like um, chiseled look. And then now you see it's like going off the edges of our uh, rectangle camera zone. So I'm just going to scale that down by pressing S and then moving my mouse in. And then I'm going to grab these little arrows, do all that stuff. Um, if you're lost with all the keyboard shortcuts, make sure you watch the old one, even though it was um, a little bit outdated before this. Um, so now we can proceed to render it out. And that's the third or the fourth. I, I don't know. I lost I lost count of the confusing parts in my, in my previous tutorial. Um, what you're going to want to do is go to the camera tab in the properties window. Uh, go, go to the camera tab, go to um, dimensions, resolution, and then jack up the, um, the resolution from 50% all the way up to 100%. Uh, 1920 by 1080, that is perfectly fine. Um, keep in mind, if you want to upload this straight as your um, banner, you're going to need to bump this up to whatever the resolution of YouTube's banners are. So I think it was like something crazy. Um, I'm really not sure what the size of the banners are on, on YouTube. Um, so I, I don't know, figure it out. Um, anyways, I'm just going to keep mine at 1920 by 1080. It's a little bit of a shape because it doesn't really the text doesn't really fill the area, but it works. Now um, you're gonna have to do some extra editing in like Photoshop or another program um, to get this to fit inside of your profile picture or your YouTube banner or anything like that. Um, it it won't work if you upload it straight as your banner. You're gonna have to like um, resize it and position it and uh, spice it up. You, you don't have to spice it up, but that's I'm just recommending that. But you're definitely going to have to do some sort of editing to have it fit the um, specifications for YouTube's banner. I know there were people complaining that you couldn't just straight go and upload it. Um, this is meant for you to just get your logo and then use it in a different thing. You know, this is just your logo. It's not meant to be straight uploaded to YouTube's banner thing. Um, anyways, go down to output in the camera tab. Go down to output. Make sure RGB is, uh, I think that should say RGBA, it's just not, yeah. RGBA is selected under PNG, so PNG and then RGBA. If you, if it doesn't say RGBA, it's probably because this window is too small, you just got to expand it until it says RGBA. Compression, this is personal preference. If you want it to be a small file but take longer to render, go to 100% or 0%, vice versa. Um, so I'm just going to put mine to 100%. Um, output doesn't really matter because we're going to be saving a copy. Um, go to, now this is the very, very important part. Um, people weren't getting transparent backgrounds, so they couldn't use it in their own projects, uh, which is probably a di direct result of people trying to upload it straight to YouTube's banner because they couldn't edit it later. So go to shading right here and under alpha, go to transparent. People were selecting sky and that was just keeping... Um, the color, the solid color background. But if you want a transparent background, so you can edit it further in like Photoshop or something, um, go to um, alpha and then transparent. Uh, now we're pretty much ready to render. Some people couldn't press F12 to uh, render it out. So if you just stay in the camera tab and then click render, 
it will render out. Notice how it's a little bit dark. Uh, we can actually fix that up if you um, if you press escape on your keyboard, it'll get you out of that render preview. Um, now go back to the world, like the little earth bubble, the little earth bubble tab, um, and then go down to ambient inclusion, check it, factor 100, environment lighting, check it, energy one, or one, and then indirect lighting, check it, and keep it at default, and then gather, go to approximate. And that's pretty much it. You can proceed to go to the camera tab and then click. Oh, it should look something like this with a checkered background because it's supposed to be transparent. And it, it looks pretty snazzy. Um, so go down to image in the lower left and click save a copy. Now go to your desktop, look or like um, navigate to your desktop and then hit save as image up in the top right. Now you're greeted with this lovely little file and there's no black background shenanigans. It's all transparent. Hopefully this helped you guys. Um, if Blender comes out with another version, I, I should make an updated tutorial because um, a lot of things usually do change. I know there was a lot of changes between the two versions that I was talking about. So I'm glad to make this updated tutorial to help you guys out. So if this tutorial or updated tutorial or tutorial update, I don't know. Um, helped you make sure to leave a like it really helps out and um, comment if you have any questions or suggestions for an update um, or anything that didn't work for you and I'd be glad to help you out and uh, reply to your comment telling you what you can do to fix whatever happened uh, anyways hope this guy helps you guys um, you can proceed to take this little file drop it in Photoshop do some touch-ups and make it the appropriate size for YouTube's banners. Um, I'm not sure what the appropriate size for YouTube's banners is, but you can look it up. Um, so anyways, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Peace out!